Welcome to my balcony, the Il Mio Balcone in uh, Abologna in the beautiful city in the Emilia Romagna region of, uh, of Italy, the beautiful city of Bologna. And I've uh, received some questions from folks about uh, staying in Airbnbs and what it's like to stay in an apartment in the middle of the city and you know what's an, an apartment like in a really old building. This building by the way was uh, built in the 1700s at least parts of it were so don't know exactly how old the floor I'm standing on is. There's been a lot of additions and so on to this place over the years I suspect but it's been here for a very long time however long it is. It has a beautiful tile roof uh, and uh, I have a, I think I have a picture on my Instagram feed. I saw a cross section on display of how these tile roofs are, are kind of uh, updated now to uh, more modern technology and what's underneath them and, and so on. And uh, that's, I believe, in my Instagram feed somewhere. So if you're interested in that, take a look for it. So, uh, yeah, we started at the balcony because the balcony is uh, where you've mostly seen me in this apartment if you've been watching the videos that I've posted. Uh, but uh, the, the balcony actually overlooks, uh, opens up rather to the bedroom. And the bedroom is not really big. It's pretty small, but it has a queen size bed in it and it's a nice uh, Kia memory phone mat mattress. I'm a, you know, I'm also an Airbnb host uh, in Tallahassee. So I know um, that a lot of Airbnb properties I've stayed in and a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, of, uh, uh, places uh, depend a lot on the Kia products and uh, my apartment in Tallahassee that I rent out is no exception. Uh, this is a little desk, a little antique desk that was in, that's in the uh, apartment up on this floor. I've been kind of using it as a staging area for uh, uh, my keys and wallet and stuff like that uh, before I get up and go in the morning. Uh, there are a couple of uh, additional windows in this room that have shutters on them. The shutters have been mostly closed on this trip. They over, both of them overlook um, uh, a, a courtyard, so it's not really uh, very interesting to look at, and I get plenty of light in the other way. Uh, this is my little closet area, and it came with a nice dresser. Uh, by the way, there's radiator heat in this building, and it has been cold. This is, uh, this is still winter. Um, take a look at this roof here. This roof is way, way, way cool. Uh, but it's not as cool as the uh, ceiling downstairs that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, this, oh, by the way, I think those, um, those grids back there are also IKEA. The hangers are IKEA. It's an IKEA household. Why not? So this is a bathroom, and this is a very well-equipped uh, bathroom. It has a tub in it, which is really nice. I'm sure this was a family home at one time or a person's home. Uh, so it has a tub in it. There's a toilet and a bidet, which uh, every... Every Italian bathroom has a bidet in it. And by the way, uh, everything is more or less clean now. I had the cleaning products that I had here. I went ahead and tried to uh, clean up the place before I left a little bit. I've got my toiletries packed up for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be leaving really, really early in the morning, so I haven't. Uh, and there's a shower back here. And, uh, you know, it's. Um, it's nice. There's a skylight up on top of the shower. It has a remote control uh, um, shutter on it that float kind of at the top. This is the uh, this is the water heater, and uh, the water heater heats both the uh, here's the, the control, and it heats both the uh, the uh, hot water for the washing machine and the sink and the shower and so on. Uh, it also um, there's the washing machine, and I'll show you more about that in a second. It also heats up this thing. There's a separate coil, separate uh, control for this thing, and this is just a big radiator uh, with lots of, uh, lots of slats on it. It's a place to dry your towels and your clothes and stuff like that. Uh, it takes the place of having a dryer here in the house, and there's also a nice fold-out uh, nice fold uh, laundry dryer there. This is way cool. I've never seen one of these before. This is a teeny, eensy, tiny... Uh, washing machine. Yeah, it's a little old, a little used, but uh, it is so cool. I actually looked up the company. I think it's uh, they're owned by uh, a U.S. company, or a multinational anyway. And uh, this uh, this thing will wash a pretty good size load. It's not that big. There's my hand to show you. It's a pretty small thing. It fits in this little tiny closet here in the uh, in the bathroom. Uh, and then that's the bathroom. So let's look at the oh, also the ceiling in the bathroom. This is a very rustic uh, construction method. This actually looks like it's a newer ceiling 
than the one downstairs that I'll show you in a second. But um, so that might mean that maybe this uh, this part of the building was a little bit a little bit newer than the, the other part that we're going to go down and look at. So there's a, an arch here, and uh, where this table sits, so people don't fall through it, which would be a bad thing. And a set of stairs going down, and also what looks like the remnants of a of a window here. So my guess is that at one point uh, this uh, this part of the room here that I'm walking down these stairs and I'm walking down. I'll give you the reverse shot in a second. Uh, these stairs that I'm walking down were were added on and the uh, the building kind of popped up at some point in the past to add this extra floor and from the uh, fit and finish of the equipment up there the uh, fit and finish of the windows and doors I would say in the uh, sometime in the 1900s uh, and I'm um, probably uh, the the uh, later two-thirds of the 1900s however this room the room that was added on to is pretty freaking amazing and uh, as you can see, that used to be a window there probably up there. These uh, rafters are just basically they're pieces of tree, of trunks of trees. Uh, some of them are, are still round and uh, some of them are twisted and gnarly and like this, these over here are. This is just an amazing, an amazing ceiling uh, that I get to marvel at every day while I'm here, uh, which sadly is, is uh, ending any today but look at these beams they're just incredible and of course the the uh, apartment is painted this this pink color I don't think it would have been the color that I chose if it was my apartment but it's not it belongs to an awesome uh, an awesome proprietor an awesome landlady an awesome Airbnb host who has been kind enough to let me stay here um, these are the stairs going up to the bedroom so uh, and they're they're not not real steep uh, they're a little slippery uh, I think the first uh, the first day I was here, I kind of had a little bit of a slip on them, so I, I've um, I've been uh, better ever since about not uh, not letting that happen. Over here in what used to be a window, there is a book, couple of bookshelves, and of course, like every other Airbnb, there's a bunch of uh, miscellaneous books, mostly travel books. Uh, some have probably left here by previous uh, tenants. There's this nice table that I used as my uh, my work surface, my desk when I was doing computer work, uh, working on my Italian lessons and so on. There's some uh, some fold-out chairs, a little bench along the wall, and then this nice kitchen. And it's an interesting kitchen because it's kind of in a place where, uh, you know, right here with my head, uh, well, let's see, I run into it right here. So there I am hitting the uh, hitting the top of that thing. So it's kind of at the in the eaves. This was the attic of the building, obviously. Uh, the only window in this room is down here underneath this counter. And it is a, uh, a window that, let's see if I can remember how to open this up, that overlooks the street. So it's the attic window from this building. And when you look at buildings on the street, there's, uh, there's attic windows in all sorts of buildings. So uh, I don't, this looks like this does some other tricks. I don't know how to do them, and I've been kind of avoiding doing anything that was going to... didn't want to do anything that I couldn't undo, as you know what they say. A nice refrigerator. The refrigerator is actually built into the, uh, built into the cabinetry. I think, again, this might be IKEA cabinetry. Uh, there's an oven. Down here, there's a, a freezer, which I have not turned on. I haven't needed it, and I haven't used it. So there's a freezer down here. Uh, ditto with the oven. I haven't used the oven, although I did just to check to make sure it turns on, and it does. And uh, it came stocked with some food, uh, food stuff, uh, probably left by previous tenants. Who knows? I'm leaving a few things behind, some, uh, some pasta. I got a package of pasta because I used one up that was here, and uh, uh, some, uh, some vinegar uh, that I'm that I picked up when I was here, some coffee and a couple of bottles of Prosecco because you can never have enough Prosecco. This is a nice thing. This is like a uh, gas range in a, uh, in, a, in a mobile home or in a, uh, in a camper. It has this nice cover on it. A couple of sinks. Uh, there is a, uh, a pump under the sink that we did have problems with at one point. Um, you know, this, this is an old building. And so when you live in an old place like this, you have to uh, you have to realize that things might go wrong and in this case what went wrong is the pump failed 
And I think what might have happened is it might have gotten disconnected electrically next door because I think that pump serves two different apartments. And so the pump flooded and uh, I was washing the dishes and I was starting to feel squishy sounds as I was moving my feet around and I realized I was standing in a puddle of water. So uh, I turned the water off, I investigated, I saw it was coming out of the top of this pump. I, pump wasn't turning on, you know, I, I kind of figured out that it was a pump and um, so, uh, you know, I, I contacted the landlady, she said she'd call a plumber and I turned everything off and mopped up the mess and uh, made everything as nice as I could and then uh, went off to go visit a museum and came back about four hours later and there was about an inch of water on the floor that went all the way out into the living room. It was amazing and it turned out that the pump also serves the apartment next door. That person didn't know that it was out. I didn't know that it served the apartment next door and so the water came in and so he had another bit of a cleanup job um, and I contacted the landlady, told her what I thought had happened. She wasn't in town but she called a plumber who came the next day and he said yes that's exactly what happened. <laughs> the electricity uh, got disconnected in the next apartment or the, the circuit got turned off or something and and so uh, you know uh, uh, that's why the water leaked and in about a half hour he fixed it and everything was hokey dokey. So having been an Airbnb host and having been an Airbnb guest at a lot of different Airbnbs I've been at Airbnbs and um, Norway, in uh, Denmark, in the Netherlands, in, uh, in Italy, in the United States. You know, I've been at a lot of different ones and I've traveled uh, a lot, lot more of the world than just that. But um, it's, it's a, a different experience than staying in a hotel. You know, if you stay in a hotel, you expect that everything's going to be just perfect and if there's any problems at all you're paying so darn much money that you call up the front desk and you say hey I saw a hair you know in the kitchen sink and somebody didn't clean it properly and in about five minutes there's a knock on your door and there's someone from housekeeping that that you know t pulls that offending hair out of your sink <laughs> it, it's amazing what people complain about one of the things I've learned doing the Airbnb hosting is people complain about the strangest things and uh, and ask the strangest questions you know and uh, so um, you know my my experience is that most Airbnb hosts are kind um, I look for super hosts uh, which means that they've uh, gotten some pretty good feedback from their former guests and uh, um, you know I um, I was a super host and <laughs> from my apartment in Tallahassee until this big giant construction uh, project pretty much surrounded the apartment house and uh, it's still surrounding uh, at least uh, at least uh, half of it and um, you know now there's a dirt road you get to on it so even though people you know said I was a good host and the apartment was clean and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They uh, have been giving me bad marks for location, so I've lost my, I've lost my super host status. Uh, oh well, too bad. Things happen. You can't uh, spend your life complaining or feeling bad about things because uh, things will get better. Um, but uh, being an Airbnb host, I I think a lot when I come to a place about you know. Uh, how it is to host somebody in this place and uh, this you know although this is in a much more historic building although the my apartment the building that my apartment in is uh, to some extent historic uh, this um, this building is a lot more historic it was uh, it was a building before America was a country so you know that's that's pretty amazing <laughs> it's pretty amazing and you know, right across the street is a building that was built in the 1200s. This building was built in the 1700s. Right across the street, uh, I walk under it every day, uh, is a tower that was built in the 1200s, and it um, it's amazing. So, you know, old buildings have their problems. Um, I wouldn't expect this place to look like the, like a you know a $500 a night um, 
suite in a fancy hotel uh, but when I got here it was clean uh, it was well equipped the dishes were clean uh, there was uh, a little bit of food left for me which is very nice I really appreciate that and I'm leaving a little bit of food for the next person I hope that they uh, are enjoyed as much as I enjoyed finding the food that I found here um, the, uh, there have been a couple small problems. Uh, we had a problem with the internet uh, the second week we were here, I think, and uh, the uh, DSL internet system went out. And I think there's a wiring fault in the building. The uh, proprietor was so kind, she came and uh, brought a, um, a, a, a wireless internet, um, a, you know, like a, a hotspot router uh, from one of the phone companies and put it in. But you know, for me, that really isn't um, that really isn't too usable because uh, I upload a, a videos and I upload a lot of photographs and all those things take incredible amounts of bandwidth. So um, you know, I'm really not a um, I'm not a typical internet consumer, and so I didn't want to use up her very expensive LTE. Uh, so what I've done instead is I have a, a Vodafone um, a plan for my phone, and for uh, I think it's three dollars a week or five dollars a week you get 50 gigs of, um, of internet on their plan that's an unadvertised special I don't know how I got it or why I got it but I did and it's been very useful to me uh, it's um, you know you really on these plans it's hard to to add internet you can't add a whole lot when you do it's expensive but then these good deals come along you know so so I've been uh, running this hotspot and uh, you know it's cost me another 20 or 30 uh, euros that I didn't expect to spend um, buying uh, additional uh, gigabytes on my on my Vodafone plan but uh, you know it's a small price to pay because I'm getting the apartment for a, a pretty sweet price I think I'm right in the middle of the city I'm uh, two blocks away from the main square at the university. I'm, uh, let's see, about a 15 minute walk from the Piazza Maggiore, uh, down a historic portico street, past some amazing buildings with awesome restaurants all around me, uh, two grocery stores within a uh, very, like a five minute walk, um, a uh, 24 hour uh, convenience store right around the corner, a pharmacy right in the in this exact same building <laughs> you know also there's a uh, a nice little uh, a nice little uh, kind of a I'd call it a little hippie store downstairs that a that a woman runs I haven't been in it um, uh, I've uh, taken a look in her window a few times but uh, it didn't draw me in so uh, it might, might might draw you in you don't know you know uh, but a lot of nice a uh, lot of nice places a great bakery right across the street a great bar for aperitivos uh, across the other direction there is uh, uh, trash containers in the piazza just outside of my front door so uh, there's a recycling container there's uh, one for uh, for organic garbage for compost there's one for bottles and cans one for plastic one for car uh, cardboard and paper and stuff like that and then the indifferencia, which is kind of a, um, that's everything else, the stuff that doesn't fit into one of the other four containers, uh, you kind of have to be a little more uh, creative about that. In some parts of the city, there are dumpsters or are either underground or above ground dumpsters for uh, indifferencia, but in this neighborhood, I haven't found one. So, uh, you know, I've been using the on street uh, ones and I'm not the only person. A lot of people seem to do that. It's a change. They made a change in the uh, way they're doing garbage collection in the city. And so, uh, you know, not everybody's caught up. And so people are trying to figure it out as they go. But I love this apartment. Uh, I'd, um, you know, if I had a bunch of money and, uh, you know, had the ability in my life to travel more often, uh, I would I would love to buy a place just like this because it's uh, it's nice. Now uh, it's upstairs. There are 92 stairs from my front door to that bed you saw up there a few minutes ago, and so you get a little exercise when you come in and out of this place. But uh, you know it's a nice place. Well, that's it. I've got to finish up. I've got to go uh, have dinner with some friends and uh, get to bed early because I've got a taxi cab coming a little bit after four in the morning to take me to uh, to catch an early morning flight at the airport um, but I hope that uh, I hope that you travel I hope that you think about traveling I hope that when you travel you keep your heart open that you um, you know try to remove as many of your uh, filters as you can in terms of what's right for uh, what's right for Americans because you know it's um, 
it's a different culture. Every culture you go to is a little bit different. And uh, even within the states as I travel, you know, different parts of the country are so different. But, but when you get to a foreign country, things are very different. And, um, you know, there's things here, uh, there's public art here in this city that if it was in uh, certain cities in my state in Florida, uh, it would be, the citizens would be up in, in arms because of the, of the, um, uh, the content of those statues, um, naked people, you know, and doing salacious things. So, um, yeah, it's a different world. Anyway, I hope you travel. I hope you travel to uh, Europe. Uh, if you get a chance, I hope you come to Italy. And if you come to Italy and you don't go to Bologna, you're making a huge, huge mistake because this is one of the most amazing, friendly, beautiful cities that I've ever been to in my entire life. Well, ciao. Ciao a tutti. Uh, I will see you on the other side of a Ryanair flight tomorrow, I hope. Uh, I'm heading toward Belgium, and then uh, I have to train to the Netherlands and uh, catch my, uh, my flight home uh, from the Netherlands. So uh, cheers to all of you. Uh, see you soon, and thanks for paying attention to these uh, weird rambling videos.